Well, we have a subscriber question here about Fairfax Preferred Shares. They say in April 2020, in the quarterly email update, there were a number of uh, non-contra stock picks, uh, one of those being Fairfax Preferred Shares. So could you comment on those purchases and uh, what you think of them now? Yeah, so the securities the subscribers mentioning from way back in March 2020 include the K-shares, the Fairfax K-shares, and the Fairfax G-shares. I purchased them in my personal portfolios at 1375 and 1325 respectively. And today the K shares are around 23 bucks or 2350 somewhere in there and the G shares are around 18 bucks and they've had a good rally. Um but so that's great, but I should mention that as soon as I bought these back in March 2020, they tanked really hard, just like everything I was purchasing in early 2020. And I think the G shares, for example, they fell under $10 almost as soon as I had touched them in the five or six trading days thereafter. And I remember having a phone conversation with my dad and, you know, I just told him everything I was buying for us was tanking and he just laughed, suggested I buy more. And, you know, we kind of just accept that's what happens in brutal bear markets. Everything tanks. So that's just the way it goes. But we also both think, I, I, I assume, uh, is that if you can tolerate the risk, you can tolerate the volatility, you'll probably do okay to better than okay in the end. So that's how, that's how it went for these, these preferred shares. Well, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, catching a falling knife is always difficult. I mean, it's a little different, I guess, when it's a macro environment sort of situation as opposed to company specific. But I mean, how do you, how do you view that sort of purchase generally? Yeah, I think you're right about differentiating between macro falling knives versus others. I would say that um, I have yet to go into a really volatile period without any cash or with very little cash. So the volatility doesn't bug me so much because I have the cash to take advantage of it and to give me some ballast. And once the volatility starts, I don't go and deploy my cash all at once or right away. And I kind of think of it as when you're in a bear market, you're kind of like a soldier in a fight. You want to have the mental preparation to stay in the fight. That's the big thing. You want to have well-funded companies, which act like armor, so to speak, in your portfolio. And then you want to have lots of ammunition and cash, which you can continue to fight with for a long time if things don't go your way. So, yeah, I mean, when downturns happen, I don't try to pot and pick. I just try to chip away at companies I like, either adding to new positions or taking on uh, some bigger positions in old companies that I know well. And hopefully I can do that again in the future. That's, uh, that's some great advice, really. Yeah, so I'm sure subscribers appreciate that. Um, turning back to Fairfax Preferred, did you continue to hold them? And then are you going to, or where do you stand there? Yeah, I continue to hold them. I have no plans to sell them at the moment. When When I bought them, I just thought I'd hold them, get some dividend income, hopefully get some capital gains. And that's happened so far. The dividend income has been good. The capital gains have been good. I don't anticipate capital gains going forward because they've rallied so much, but the yields are 4%, which is very respectable. So for the time being, I'm going to collect and I'm going to hold the income. Fair enough. And why didn't you end up putting them in the vice president's portfolio? If it, they were, they're obviously uh, non-contra picks. So curious about that. Yeah, volumes. Long story short, it's volumes. These preferred shares, they have very low volumes, and that's the primary reason. You know, you could also say that if you're going to purchase the uh, preferred shares in a name, you might as well purchase the common shares first contra the herd as well. But truth be told, the main reason is low volumes. Mm, okay. Yeah, in that case, you didn't buy the common. I mean, is there a reason for that? Or? Well, it crossed my mind for sure, but the common shares never got low enough for me to get interested. I realize now that they've run a long way, say 350 to 550 or thereabouts, but I guess you can't win them all and that's the way it goes. Fair enough.